Okay, here's what that batch of tools Ben Kirby sent me from the UK in the condition it arrived. Let's take a look what we did with them. First was this nice cabinet screwdriver. Pretty rough shape. Needed a good bit of work, as you can see. Primarily just cleaning and shining the shank and the tip uh, and the ferrule, but the wood itself needed to be completely, completely redone. So here's what we did with it. Now that turned out great. A little comparison there. Cleaned and shined all the metal. And of course the wood, that gorgeous wood that they use on those cabinet screwdrivers. And I took all the finish off, put a red oak stain on it because I like kind of like the reddish color in there. And uh, finished it off with a, a lacquer, coat of lacquer. And this thing is good to go. Looking good. Uh, next was... Uh, Sorry there, had to get better organized. Next was, uh, it's nice, I didn't know what it was. I kept calling it a, a screwdriver or some sort of a, uh, a tool, push tool. Actually, it's a pin setter or a nail setter, and I've actually used it. You put a nail in the end, and you slam it down on the work, and it, you know, starts the nail, got it in position where you can hammer it on in. It's nice for... Uh, real accurate placing or an area that's a tight area you can't get into where you can't always hold it just right to get it started so it's a good nail starter and of course the handle was a rough wood uh, it was peeling and rough and scraped up so I put one of my good handles on there using that nice paint I used that dark metallic copper I've used on so many items I think it makes a nice handle so we restored that one with a, that handle. And then this great footprint tool. Uh, I've had one of them in the past and I uh, uh, had to actually bring that over from the UK myself and pay a, a good price. So it was really nice of Ben to send it over to me. And I didn't have one this size. So the name was 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 readable but not real dark on there uh you could on the side the top was uh again a kind of a light printing so i didn't want to remove a lot of metal where it wouldn't show up uh so i went ahead and took the tool and cleaned it up top to bottom around and over and under and Used a matte finish on it because it had a lot of pitting on it, uh, a light pitting but scattered all through it, and which would have made it real difficult if I'd have put a a lot of sanding on it to bring the metal to a, a high luster. So I did a matte finish on there, which I've done on other tools, and that matte finish uh, came out great. I think the tools some are you know similar kind of a color that some of these tools are new. And uh, But this is an old one, an older style. It's got all the original parts. Great tool. And uh, there's the finish on that. And then there was another footprint tool, really unusual. And that's these wire cutters here. And uh, this, this, this actually uh, uh, was pretty dark, pretty stained, and uh, pitting all over it. But unusual tool. I've never seen a footprint tool like that. And so here's what I did to finish it. And basically just cleaned it all over. And you can read the logos real well on here. Footprint. Made in England. Same thing on the first side. said the footprint. Made in England. And then it says footprint. And lettering underneath the actual footprint itself. It's spring action here cutter and uh got to looking at this piece here so what is that 
realized after a while that it's a little strap. Oops, put it together to hold the tool closed. And uh, a little leather strap, but the leather was in horrible shape and split, about to break in half, about to come off of there. But it was part of the original. That's the way the tool was, was done originally. So I took this and used shoe polish. <laughs> it's leather. And uh, clean the leather up. It, it uh, It's not shiny, but I mean, it's clean and it uh, looks a lot nicer than it did before. Also, where that split was, I took a cut a piece of a strip of rubber and glued it underneath with some silicone glue to hold it together so this uh, strap wouldn't come apart. Tool works quite well. Uh, very unusual. I, I'm sure it, maybe it's common there, but I haven't seen anything designed like this. I don't know why the tip was designed that way, but uh, works great as a wire cutter and uh, all restored now. Then this wrench, I, Ghidorah wrench, I, caught, I said from Italy. I don't know why, because it looks like a wrench I'd seen from Italy before, but actually the name Ghidorah is French. It's a, it's made in France. And this dark, this tool was just, just dark, discolored, stained, but in pretty good shape overall. Worked well, wasn't, wasn't really rusty. And, uh, but I, I got it back down to the base metal. And, of course... Use some of that red paint we all like to use to dress them up, and did some fine work here with with a with a magnifying glass and a light because that was tight. But I have a teeny teeny tiny little wrench. Of course, the wrench works smoothly; works just great. This is a nice nice wrench that will work well if you want to use it as a wrench. I actually going to use it as a showpiece. Turned out very nice. Uh, next is a pair of pliers with a wire cutter in them. Nice little pair of pliers, electrical pliers, I guess you would call them. And uh, made in Sheffield, England. I just cleaned it up, cleaned up the edges. It had some red paint on the inside here. I don't know why red paint on the inside of the handle, unless at one time the handles were in completely in red. But I just left it the natural color, left it cleaned up. They work well. It's a nice, nice little pair of pliers. And a tool that uh, I said I, I couldn't identify before. I, I knew it was an end nipper, but I said there's no brand or marking on it. But uh, Ben advised me it, he, this was still, had been in the evaporust and was still coated after the, the cleaning. And so I cleaned it up, and lo and behold, look what I discovered. Nipex number 62, 60, number 66, I'm sorry, Nip, Nipex number, I want to call it Knipex or Nipex, but uh, after watching some videos on the product, they pronounce it Nipex, in, like N-I-P, Nipex. In nippers, they work quite well, uh, they close together tight. And just cleaned it all over. Uh, you can see inside it says Germany. Fur hopping dropped. I don't know. I, can, I don't speak German. <laughs> I don't know what it says. It says it on the inside of both handles. But uh, that's a great item. Unusual item. And of course they make a great tool. And while I'm at that point. Uh, I bought another one of their tools recently. Or a, one of their tools. I'd never had one before. And again, on a YouTube video, I saw, saw this tool explained and used, and gosh, I've used these. These are unbelievable. The one they, the a guy was showing and really recommended was a 5-inch, and I thought 5-inch was a little small, so I bought the 6-inch, and of course, they go on up and up and up, but I wanted something for in-hand use, slim profile to get back into tight areas, but look how the jaws work. They work in and out, and of course you can move them to different positions to get your grip. But they're straight jaws, and of course you've got a wide jaw too. 
The thing about these is the tremendous grip you get with these. You get a 10 to 1 power ratio. So you get a grip and hold it good and snug and turn it, and it's not going to slip. It grabs tight. I had plenty of wrenches with jaws for for pipes, but I wanted a flat jaw, smooth jaw for nuts and bolts, and one that you could get. You know, I usually use a pair of pliers for that, but this is this is really going to be super a super plier to use for tight spaces, and they make a great tool. These these are not cheap. This is like forty one dollars on uh, Amazon, and uh, they're made in Germany, but they got the highest rating, and it's proven to be a terrific tool. I, I don't usually spend that much on tools. Well, I seem to have a supply of tools from my old and my new, but just had to have this one. Glad I got it. Okay, back to the program. The last item was this great King Deck Deck wrench. I don't have one. I've uh, been wanting one for quite a while, but the prices are pretty high, and you have to bring them over from... Europe and uh, some, some are available here, but uh, they're pretty premium items. So they were made in several different styles. This was in the black finish. There's a black finish and a chrome finish. I like the color. I didn't want to grind it down. There's some pitting on here. I didn't want to grab it, grind it down. And uh, there's some pitting on the back side. I might, I haven't tried cold bluing yet or even hot bluing and I think what I'm going to do in the future is grind these down sand them down smooth and uh, get some of that finish and try them on here because I like the original color it's different I know you can finish them out and shine them up and polish them but this is how the wrench was original so my plan for the future on this is to uh, make it as original as can be like I kept this original Really, most of them pretty original, other than my stray a little bit here and a couple of places where I give a little embellishment. But, Ben, I thank you again. I, I really enjoyed working on these and just some nice wrenches. Some of them will be some nice show pieces to display. Some will be working tools and uh, glad to have them. Hope you enjoyed the uh, restoration.